prayer today. Uh, Sister Harriet and I were, and Sherry were, were just talking about the importance of prayer at this season, and I believe it is important. And what the Holy Spirit said to me is the title of this topic is How to Avoid Unanswered Prayers. Well, I've had my share of unanswered prayer over my lifetime, but I've also had uh, great successes uh, in prayer. And, and I want to show you, uh, I start with an example of how I had prayed for years for my eldest son, my oldest son, uh, to be delivered from drugs. And uh, that prayer was basically unanswered for a number of years until the Holy Spirit led me to change the way that I was praying. Uh, uh, and it was a total different approach and I want to share that with you. And, and I wouldn't have known. I, I would have just continued to pray for him. But I want to report that he's uh, been free from drugs and delivered from drugs for uh, several years now. And not only that, uh, God is restoring uh, everything to him. And it's uh, he at that time that uh, uh, he was caught uh, manufacturing and distributing drugs, uh, he was... Uh, driving under the influence of drugs and so he lost his driver's license and so all of all of that's been restored he, he uh the lord gave him a car uh, a few days ago and and they are now buying a house now what's uh, so uh, miraculous about that is for uh he's like 43 now and, and uh, all of his adult life he's been on drugs and uh, normally he just lives in a house for a few months and then gets evicted. That's been his history uh, for years. But now he's got his uh, life together and uh, they're in the process of buying a house. Totally uh, God, Thank a total you. miracle and turnaround. And, and so I want to show you what I've learned in this process because I spent a lot of uh, frustrating years in prayer and I was very dedicated to pray, but I was praying the wrong way. We see that Jesus uh, uh, taught three basic ways to pray. And uh, what was interesting when you looked at Jesus, uh, he never had any unanswered prayer. So what he did, he carefully considered what approach to prayer, and then he used the approach that was correct and appropriate. You see, there are three ways that he taught us, three approaches to prayer. And for any situation you face, there will be one approach that will be correct and two approaches that will be incorrect. And so if you have had some unanswered prayers, like I certainly have in the past, uh, that this is a time to reassess. Are we on the right path? Are, are we using the right approach? because a lot of people just know one way to pray, one or two ways to pray, and they, they pray that way, and, and they're persistent, and they're fervent in their prayers, but they're still getting unanswered prayers. A lot of people have unanswered prayers, and that's very bothersome, and, and we're not uh, taught to deal with unanswered prayers. If you look at the Word of God, we are taught to have our prayers answered. Uh, Jesus uh, dealt with... Uh, a uh, number of blind men, this has always fascinated me, that a number of uh, he has encountered and, and uh, uh, had blind men come to him, and, and he approached each one of them in a, in a very special way, in a, a way that was specific for them, and they all received their sight. So he had no unanswered prayers. And he said, if you believe in me, the works that I do, you'll do, and greater than this. So he's pushing us out to do better, uh, better things than he did, but we're supposed to have all of our prayers answered. And so I want to talk to you uh, today about the different ways that he taught, because I believe there's some secrets here that the Holy Spirit has uh, shared with me to help me in my prayer life. These have changed my prayer life. These have changed my life. And I want to share them with you. And I believe you'll see that uh, we, if we're going along for a period of time and we haven't gotten our prayers answered, then we ought to look at the approach that we're using and if there's something different that we need to be doing. Now, 
in Luke chapter 11, he, the disciples of Jesus asked him to teach them how to pray. And he taught them three ways to pray. And, and the first one is very familiar with all of us. Uh, and I know that uh, the people listening to me today are prayer warriors. You, you pray. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, probably a lot of you use this uh, format that he talked about, this approach, in uh, Luke chapter 11, verses 1 through 4, he said, pray to the Father. So the first approach is to pray to God the Father. And uh, in Matthew 6, 6, he had said, uh, you go into your closet, into your inner room, and you pray there in secret, and the Father who sees you in secret will reward you openly. So the first place uh, to pray is in that secret place. And I know we all pray in our secret place. Uh, but then the second uh, thing he says about is a uh, second approach is Luke chapter 11, verses five through eight. And here uh, he tells us to pray to God, our friend, and we intercede for other people in this particular prayer. We stand in the, in the place, gap, yeah. we stand in the gap, we stand in their shoes, we intercede. That's what intercession means. It means to stand in their shoes. And so that's praying to God, our friend. And uh, Jeremiah uh, talks about, uh, Jeremiah talks about uh, the counsel of God. And so when we're interceding, we're really standing in the counsel of God. And, and that's also called the inner circle, in his inner circle and in his presence. And so in, in praying to God, our friend, we're, we're in there uh, communing with the Father. And this is like Abraham. Abraham was a friend of God, remember? And, and he prayed for Sodom and Gomorrah. And he said, if there are 10 righteous people, will you deliver so Sodom and Gomorrah? And so uh, this, this is where Abraham was praying. He was praying to uh, God, our friend. But then, uh, and this is really the one I want to focus on here uh, tonight, because this is a thing that changed my life uh, today, and that is uh, Luke chapter 18, verses 1 through 8. And he said, in this case, you pray to God, our judge. Oh, hallelujah. Mm, and we, mm, we, we want to uh, think, well, a judge, we, we don't want to avoid the judge. But uh, he said, pray, this is a third approach to prayer, pray to the judge. Uh, and I, this is really important, and I want to talk about this, but see, I heard a, a, a message um, 24 years ago that said, the judgments of God are as sweet, sweeter than a honeycomb. And so all, all of a sudden I realized, oh, God's judgment standing before the judge God the judge is not that bad, but for us, because the blood of Jesus is over us and we're in Jesus Christ. And so uh, we're to pray to God the judge. And Matthew says that it's judgment unto victory. So if we go before the judge, we're gonna get victory. And so let's look at this in a little bit, in a little bit more detail. And basically in the court system that he was talking about, the judicial system, there was a judge and an adversary and a widow woman. And now I want to just talk about the adversary for a moment. Uh, the adversary, we want to just think, well, that's just some general uh, evil force coming against us. But, but the word Jesus used here is very interesting because he said, um, first of all, let me say that you have rights. You have legal rights. And it's the legal rights that Jesus bought for you, purchased for you on the cross. So you have legal rights. And so the name of this adversary is anti-rights. So, <laughs> so he, in Greek, it's called, of course called antidikos, but, but that means anti-rights. He's against your rights. And so he has come uh, into the courthouse to bring charges and, and against you, accusations, he, a, accusations against uh, each of us. He, he's there. <clears throat> now in Revelations uh, chapter 12, 
verse 10, and it's talking about this same thing, this accuser. He's accuser, and he's before God day and night accusing you. He, this is the person bringing a lawsuit against you. Yeah. Against yeah. you. Yeah. A law, he's bringing a lawsuit against you yeah. to take away your rights. See, Jesus bought rights for you, but there is an evil force coming, and his name is anti-rights. He's against your rights, just like there's the Christ and the Antichrist. Mm -hmm. The spirit of Antichrist is against Christ. Well, the spirit of anti-rights is against your rights. So Jesus purchased many things for you, but the spirit of anti-rights doesn't want you to have anything. And uh, what he's going to do, he's going to resist you and hinder your prayers. And, and, and you might say, well, I'm just going to continue praying to the Father, praying for the Father. Well, see, I did that for 22 years for my son until the Holy Spirit told me I was praying the wrong way. Uh, I, you don't need to go 22 years with unanswered prayers. Because in Luke chapter 18, again, in this story I'm talking about, where he talks about the judge, the widow, and the ant adverse ad adversary, which I'm saying in the Greek is really just anti-rights. He's bringing charges against the woman, and the woman, the widow woman, had no power, but she uh, finally, threw with the judge, because of her persistence, uh, got uh, a judgment. Uh, against him, a verdict against uh, the anti-right spirit, okay? So, but then Jesus said, we're not coming before an unjust judge. We're coming before the righteous judge of all, and we're going to uh, execute a verdict against him, okay? So, why even be concerned about this? Because you have an adversary, and first Peter Chapter 5, verse 8 says that your adversary or this spirit of anti rights is seeking whom he may devour. And then in, in Revelations, as I've already quoted, he said he's before God day and night. And we're thinking about, well, we pray, we pray in the morning, or we may pray at night. But here is an anti rights spirit that's coming against to steal your rights, to keep you from getting your prayers answered. Now, why would God let a, a, an anti-right spirit um, uh, come against you in the courts of heaven? And, and because God is a judge of all, and he's a, he's a righteous judge, and if somebody's bringing charges against you, he's not going to say, I will not hear the charges. So this anti-rights spirit, who we just call an enemy or call an adversary or call an accuser, but, but see, then if we just call him something general, we don't know what he's really after. He's really after your legal rights. He's wanting to stop your prayers from being answered. And that's really, really serious. I mean, this is life and death situation. If we do not pray correctly, our answers will not be, an our prayers will not be answered. So there are three different approaches that I've talked about. Praying to God the Father, and, I, and I'm sure all of you do that. And praying to God the friend, and I'm sure uh, you do that. But then the third approach is praying to God the judge. And in, in the judicial system in heaven, and, and it's already going on. It, this is not something that's going to happen in the in the future, in the sweet by and by. Uh, Hebrews chapter 12, verses 22 through 24 says, you've already come to this spiritual mountain called Jerusalem, spiritual mountain, to the judge of all. You're already there. So don't think, oh, uh, judgment is, is uh, bad or, or, or it's not going to happen until sometime in the far future, but Hebrews says it's all, you are already there. And where, wh who else is there? Well, the, the church is there. The uh, Jesus is there. 
Mm -hmm. the, he, he's the mediator. He's there in the courtroom, in heaven's courtroom. And uh, here's a good thing that's there that you might not have thought about. It's about his blood speaking. So it's the speaking blood is there too. And that, that's, that's where your solution is. It's the speaking blood, the blood of Jesus Christ, because his blood speaks better things than the blood of Abel. See, Abel's blood, uh, well, you know that his br brother Cain killed Abel and, and God uh, wanted to see what was happening. And so uh, the blood cried out to him and, and said that Cain had, had killed Abel. And so uh, God sent Cain away because of what? It wasn't, he, he didn't have any eyewitnesses there. It was the blood crying out mm -hmm. that we need, mm -hmm. we need a, a, a verdict in this situation. Now, in your situation, you need a verdict. You need a verdict, uh, and it's going to take the blood of Jesus to speak out on your behalf. And so you, let me just put it this way. You have to know what the anti-rights evil spirit is saying about you. Okay, so we've got three different ways to, to pray three different ways. One way is correct. Every situation you encounter, one way is correct and two ways are incorrect. So if you choose the wrong ones, it's not up to you. It's just one is right and two are not going to get you answered prayer. So most of the reason people have unanswered prayer is that they're using the wrong approach. Most people do not go into the courtroom of heaven and that's the place where we get the victory. And uh, we don't know which approach, this is interesting, we don't know which approach is going to be used in any situation, but the Holy Spirit does. Hallelujah. See, Romans chapter 8, verse 26 says, we don't know how to pray. We don't know which approach to take. We don't know what to say, but the Holy Spirit does. The Holy Spirit has been given here on the earth so that we know which approach. If you take the right approach, you will get your prayers answered. The way that you do not have uh, your prayers answered is you use the wrong approach. And so I want to talk about this courtroom process and what's going on there. And you might say, well, I haven't seen the devil around here bothering me. I haven't I haven't seen a, a, a guy come up in a red suit and horns and a pitchfork. I haven't seen anything like that. Well, he may not be around you. He's in heaven bringing accusations against you. Now, what kind of accusations might he bring against you? Well, there might be some things that, you've, that you have uh, committed yourself, but listen to this. It may be some things that your fathers did, your fathers and your, and your uh, mothers and your, and your ancestors did because there are curses that come down. There are curses, and you might say, well, I, I prayed about all my curses, but let me tell you, have you gotten a verdict on it? That, that, that's the reason you go to court, is to get a verdict, and, and the, you cannot, in God's, listen to this, in God's courtroom, you cannot justify yourself. The only thing that's going to justify you is the blood of Jesus, and there's nothing lacking in the blood of Jesus, so you will always be justified. You just have to deal with the issues that the enemy is bringing against you. It says in Proverbs 26, 2, that a curse will not come upon you without a cause. We could put it another way. The curse is not going to come uh, upon you without a legal right, without a legal right. Okay, so let's think about that. Let's say you had a, a, a grandfather that uh, killed somebody, maybe by negligence or you had uh, uh, a, a, a grandmother that had depression. And so that depression comes down uh, generation after generation, or that grandfather that by negligent, negligence killed somebody, then he took away their, their uh, dreams. And, and so that's gonna happen to you that you're going to be real close to getting victory and then, and then you lose your dreams. The dreams don't come and pass. Uh, or you might have a, a father that was angry, just had some anger issues, and, and then you have some anger issues, and you just say, well, it just runs in the family. Let me tell you, that's a curse. Uh, 
That's a curse that needs to be dealt with in the courts of heaven. And you'll always win in the courts of heaven because you don't justify yourself. It's the blood. But there has to be somebody bringing the blood against the issues. So if you've got a curse in your family, and uh, I, I'm... Uh, I look around at my uh, family, I'm old enough to see that I see patterns uh, uh, mm. uh, repeating over and over again uh, in my own family. And I, and I see, and I see curses. Well, man, we, our family had a lot of curses. I hope you didn't have any, but my family had a, a lot of curses. There were, I lost a 17 year old brother. I lost a 17 year old nephew. You, you think that's just random occurrence? No, that's a curse. I, I lost a, uh, a 17 uh, year old uh, brother with suicide. I lost my mother with suicide. You think that's random? No, that's not random. That's a curse. And it has to be dealt with in the courts of heaven. Uh, you can't just uh, take these things lightly. If you get your hold of this message that I'm, I'm telling you today, it will change your prayer life. Amen. It will change your life. You'll change your unanswered prayers to pr answered prayers. It's changed my life, and I have seen uh, healings in my body that have resulted uh, from me just confessing the faults of my ancestors. And how did I know the faults of my ancestors? Well, I knew some of them. I knew a few grand. Uh, I knew all my grandparents and a few great grandparents, but I didn't know everything that they had done. I surely didn't, but the Holy Spirit did. And so if there's anything being used against me in the courts, see, I spend a lot of time in, in just seeking the Lord, spending the time with the Holy Spirit, because really, I, I showed you a few moments ago uh, that you can't, you don't know how to pray. Oh, and you think, oh, yeah, I do. I know how to pray. Yeah, but are your prayers answered? Because Jesus never had an unanswered prayer. And he never taught how to deal with unanswered prayers. He's only taught about how to get your prayers answered. And it's just three simple approaches. And, and so we, you, we do have to know that we have an adversary, an anti-rights spirit that's evil, that wants to bring accusations against you day and night so that you don't get your prayers answered. And the way to silence him is with the blood. Now, if you've done something, you come to the, let me go through this example. How can we actually apply this in our lives? Well, uh, let's say you got angry. Uh, hopefully you never got angry at your spouse, but I have had, I've been angry at my spouse. I had to apologize to her. But not only that, I had to go to court, uh, to the heavenly court and uh, 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 repent and ask uh, for forgiveness and ask for the blood that speaks of better things, the blood of Jesus that speaks of better things to blot out uh, those uh, sins uh, that were against me and, and for the Lord to render a verdict. And so uh, then the scriptures become alive. And so I began to declare those things. I began to prophesy them. I began to declare them until I get the results. So if there's, uh, if there's sickness and there's been sickness in my body, I've dealt with a lot of health issues. Uh, one uh, one uh, health issue recently that the Lord uh, healed me of was high blood pressure. And uh, uh, two days ago, uh, my blood pressure was 112 over 73. 112 over 73. You know, that's not high blood pressure because the Lord has healed me from high blood pressure because I've confessed my faults. I've gone up to the court, to the heavenly court and asked for a verdict. When I get the verdict, then I declare it. Because we see in Psalm chapter uh, 149, at the, end of the, at the end of that chapter, it says uh, execution uh, of judgment belongs to the saints. Okay, so if you get a judgment from the uh, court, and of course we're talking about the court in heaven and from the judge, uh, of the righteous judge of all, if you get a judgment, in other words, you've, uh, you know that the Holy Spirit is bringing forth uh, this judgment that, uh, that you have victory in a particular area, such as healing, um, then you have to execute it, bring it into action. 
action. See, a verdict uh, that is not executed, it has no power in it. You can read a verse and say, oh, there it is, I'm healed, I'm healed. I see that in that verse that I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus, but that has no power until it's executed. But you're the one with the power to execute it. Mm, you See, that's Psalm 149. You have the power to execute the verdict. So the verdict has to come from God. It's certainly in the Word. It's written in the Word, but it's got to come alive to you. When it becomes alive to you, you can become to you can begin to decree it and declare it and to prophesy it until it is real manifestation in your life. Amen. Let, let's just look at a verse. Uh, it talks about uh, uh, Mary and Joseph. You know, when, when they were going to have Jesus, uh, they're, they're, they had to go to Bethlehem to, uh, to, for, um, see to, be what, to be taxed. To, to, uh, it was really a registration. They, they went down there to be registered uh, what family they were in. Well, but you know that law had been on the books 27 years, and it didn't come into effect until uh, the, the ruler said he decreed it to come into effect. It's the same thing with the verses in the Bible. You can read them, and you can read them uh, till your eyes pop out, but if there's never a decree, if there's never any execution of it, it's not going to happen in your life. You've got to say some things because you know salvation comes out of your mouth. It's, it starts in your, in your heart, but you've got to confess some things. If we don't confess what Jesus purchased for us on the cross, uh, we won't get it. So your ancestors, uh, you may have had a, a great grandparents that were poor, your parents may have been poor, and you, you might be poor, but the Bible says Jesus became poor that you might be rich. Now, how are we going to get that operating in our life? You have to go to the courts, and, and, and if there's anything against you because of what your grandparents did that uh, caused a legal right for the, uh, the evil spirits to stop your uh, prosperity, then you need to get that judgment and let it become alive. The Holy Spirit will show you which verses uh, are come alive, and then you decree it out of your mouth, and that executes it. That the word on the Bible has no power until there's a decree that this is the judgment. This is the judgment from heaven. So there's got to be some people uh, that find out what's in the scriptures and what's been purchased on the cross by Jesus Christ, and then begin to uh, prophesy uh, that things are going to change, and, and the sickness is going to go, and the and the and the prosperity is going to come, and healing is going to come. There's got to be somebody that decrees uh, the law. Mm -hmm. See, with uh, uh, um, Joseph and Mary had been on the books 27 years, but nobody had ever decreed it. So they never went to Bethlehem until the ruler decreed that there was going to be a taxation and a registration, and they had to go to be registered. It's the same in your life. You can get that book and look at it, and it has no power until it comes alive, until you begin to speak it out because psalm 149 said the power to execute a judgment belongs to you Holy glory god. to god it's already written jesus has already accomplished it it's in the bible it's written down but you've got to have a a judgment from god from the god of the righteous god uh, the righteous judge of all God, the righteous judge of all. When you get that, you can declare it. You say, this is a lie to me. Now, it, but if we just let the evil spirits go, they're going to be standing there and keeping your prayers from being answered. Mm -hmm. I tell you, if you get a hold of this message today, you may not, it, it may not all go in, may not all sink, but the reason I put it out on YouTube for you, and I've told Sister Harriet where it is, 
uh, then you can go back and listen to it again uh, because it'll change your life if you get this message because Jesus said there are three approaches to prayer and if you use the wrong approach, your prayers will be unanswered. And many times unanswered prayers need to be taken uh, to the judge, the righteous judge of all. Oh, and you go there and and whatever uh, uh, accusations that the enemy is using against you, you plead the blood and let the blood speak for you. You don't justify yourself, but the blood of Jesus justifies you. Woo, glory, that's, that's exciting. You will not lose a case in heaven, in heaven's courtroom. And you have come to heaven's courtroom now. You don't wait till you die to get there because you're just going to have continued unanswered prayer. Now, Sister Harriet said we need to be praying uh, over our, our over our region and over our cities and yes. we need to but you need to know how to pray. It's not always one way. You pray one way all the time and you're going to have a lot of prayers that are unanswered. But Jesus had no unanswered prayers because he was led by the Holy Spirit. Now remember he said, I can do nothing by myself. And then he said, you can do nothing by yourself. You have to listen to the Holy Spirit, spend time with him. See, I've been, I've been working on, on this process in my life uh, for, for months and, and months, uh, cleaning out all of the stuff on the inside of me because the Holy Spirit said, if I clean out what's on the inside, if, if you get to all of that clean, then you're going to see all kinds of healing on the outside and, and, and yeah. prosperity on the, out, on the outside. But I tell you, there are things that our fathers and grandfathers did uh, that that caused us to be eligible for curses. And it says in 1 Peter 5, 8, that you have an anti-rights spirit that is searching for things to come against you to cause your prayers to be unanswered, but you have a Holy Spirit that will bring every prayer uh, answered in your life if you will follow him. Hallelujah! Woo! Glory. Thank you, Jesus. I want my prayers to be answered. And I know that you do too. Hallelujah. And I know that as, as Brother Fred and I have, have uh, prayed over this and, and just uh, begin um, talking about it and the Holy Spirit uh, showing us things and, and I, I thank the Lord for that. And so uh, today, what I want you to consider um, is to search, ask the Lord to search your heart. Ask the Lord to search your heart to see if there's any uh, unforgiveness there. Is there any uh, anger there? Is there any poverty there? Uh, is there any uh, generational uh, curses of, of, of all, you know, all kinds of things, divorces and 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 diabetes and arthritis and all of that heart disease, all of that uh, comes down through uh, the bloodline, you know, but praise the Lord for the blood of Jesus. And that's what, as we go into that court, uh, the heavenly court system, uh, that we can depend on the blood of Jesus to be there uh, to cover us and that we can come out of that court uh, with, uh, with a victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I, I know that in each one of your lives, there are areas, and I, and I say it for myself as well, there are, there's areas that we need victory. We need victory uh, possibly in our families. We need victory in our bodies. We need victory in our minds. We need victory in our finances. And so this is, this is where, you know, we, we have to know the right approach. And, uh, and I know that God is my father, my heavenly father, and I go to him and I know that he loves me and I can feel that love and I can, and, and I can receive his love, hallelujah. And I know that when I stand in the gap uh, for other people, when I intercede, uh, you know, that he, uh, I go to him as my, as my friend, 
you know, and, and I say, Lord, you know, this person, you know, they, they need healing in their bodies. They need, um, they need some finances to buy food with or gasoline or, or, or whatever, or to do the ministry. Um, and so he, he's there, you know, praying with me. You know, Jesus is ever interceding uh, for, for the saints. And he's, he's standing in the gap. And, and so uh, we can stand in the gap today. Um, as you think about praying over your community and over where you are, where you live physically, then you can go into the court system and say, what, what are the, what's being uh, um, brought as accusations against um, this area? Uh, uh, against my family uh, and and you can go into that court system and and the Holy Spirit will show you and that's one of my favorite scriptures that uh, brother Fred mentioned uh, a little bit ago and that's Romans 8 26 because literally that verse means uh, that if you if you read it in the expanded uh, version uh, translation it means, um, and the Holy Spirit will take hold with you against. Hallelujah. And so any accusations that have been brought uh, into the court system against you, then the Holy Spirit will take hold with you. And so, and we know that Jesus not only is our mediator of the new covenant, but also he's our advocate. He's our lawyer. And he's the best that there is. And so we thank, uh, thank the Lord for his blood uh, today. And we thank the Lord for our effective prayers so that we get the victory. Hallelujah. And I want Brother Fred just to share the verse that the Lord gave to him about our son, Jason, uh, when he had been praying for uh, 22 years and, and nothing um changed and uh, there was no uh victory there uh but uh brother fred will you share the verse that the lord gave you isaiah 49 verses 24 and 25 says though he is a legal captive i will deliver him now let me tell you what that what that meant he my son okay i'd been praying for him uh, for 22 years he was manufacturing drugs distributing drugs taking drugs he was driving under the influence of drugs. And so he actually uh, was facing several years of prison time, several years. And uh, they had him on all of those things and, and, and they could not be denied. But, but, but see, the Holy Spirit took me a different direction than me just simply continuing to pray the, for the Father. He, he said, though he is a a legal captive. See, the Holy Spirit took me into the legal system. I'm talking about in the heavens legal system, the third approach, the judge, the righteous judge of all. And he said, though he is a legal captive, I will deliver him. And so my whole outlook changed, my prayers changed, my expectations changed when I realized I, I needed to go through the legal system of heaven and, and not just pray for my heavenly father uh, to deliver him, but there had to be some things broken off of him. See, he's adopted. He was adopted uh, when he was six months old. And, and so there was, you think about curses, there were certainly some curses in his life. And we had, uh, we had uh, over the time, over the years, tried to deal with those curses but you have to take them to the judge to get a verdict. Mm -hmm. And then you have to execute the verdict and see that verse then uh, became alive to me. Those, uh, those verses uh, in Isaiah 49 became alive to me that I, I began to execute that judgment. I had a judgment from the heavenly courts mm -hmm. and I began to execute it. And then that's when I, when he got free, uh, he got free and of course he, the, the, uh, he had been arrested and like I said he was facing years of prison but when God said that though he is a legal captive I will deliver him that was I executed that and he 
has not spent any time in prison. He will not spend any time in prison. He, he was he was guilty of all the stuff they had against him and all the charges they had. He even admitted he was guilty of all of it, but he will not spend any time in prison. Uh, he's been on uh, uh, a pro was it pro probation. Probation. He's been on probation, and when that period's over with in just a couple of years, he won't even have a felony against him. Not even a felony. Like I said, he he is. Uh, He's buying a house now, that, and all of that is a miracle. It's because the Holy Spirit changed my whole thinking, changed my approach yeah. to, to get that verdict out of heaven, and, and then for me to execute it on His behalf. He, he was still messed up on drugs, and I couldn't even see him because he was locked up in jail. Mm -hmm. But I executed the judgment Hallelujah. over him. Hallelujah! And. God delivered him like he promised. You might want to go to the gallery. And what I would like to, to encourage each one of you is to take your case to the, to the righteous judge. Uh, for instance, you know, Sister Eleanor, with, uh, with your, your land and your property and, and, and things there, you know, take it, to, take it into the court system you know, and, and find out, you know, what, what are the accusations that have been, that have been spoken over me and, and the blood of Jesus, cover those, those with the blood of Jesus. And I speak victory to you in every area of your life. I speak victory in the name of Jesus. I speak victory to your body. I speak, I tell any pain in your body to leave right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, in your right hip, I tell it uh, to be healed in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so you take, take that to the righteous judge uh, about your property and about your rights. And uh, because you have, you have legal rights. And, and, you know, we're in the kingdom of God. And so we, we do not operate as the world operates. That's a word. For someone we do not operate like the world does but we operate in the kingdom of god and that's a different economy uh, that's a different court system uh, we we operate in the kingdom of god and so that that is a word for at least two people listening right now in jesus name you've been trying to do it the world's way and that's not going to work that is not going to work. You have got to go to the court system um, in the heavenly realm and, and approach the, um, the justice, the, the righteous judge, and, and you're going to see victory uh, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Are Hallelujah. Are there any questions? Uh, you'll need to unmute yourself, but are there any comments or questions about what Brother Fred has taught today. Um, Paul, what? I think I understand everything he just thought, but I have a question. Okay. Sure. Can, can Brother Fred give an example of something not, not um, just an, an outline or an example, because I want to make sure I understand perfectly. It doesn't have to be long. One of the things that I have myself said to the Lord is that I open up my bloodline. Caffeine in it? Okay, I'll have water. I open up my bloodline to let the Holy Spirit search it to see what has uh, given the accuser a right to bring curses against me and my family. I, there are lots of curses in my family. Uh, and so I opened up uh, my bloodline, let the Holy Spirit show me. And, and so I saw things in my family, what my dad did, what my brothers did, I, uh, different things. I, I saw those. And and at the time when I was a little boy and saw some things, I, I thought they were cute. I thought they were okay. That's my dad doing that. But but the Holy Spirit showed me that was 
That was evil. And so I, I repented myself yeah, for what I had done and repented for what my father had done. I repented for my grandfather, what he had done. Some of the things I knew by the spirit, some of the things I knew uh, that, I, that I knew uh, by what I had observed as a little boy. But most of it was what were the accusations that the enemy was using against me in this day. And I would repent of them and I would repent for the person who uh, had committed it and ask for the blood of Jesus to speak to me for over that situation. Okay, so blood, high blood pressure is definitely a curse that my family uh, had a, a medical uh, doctor as my nephew. He said all of my family had high blood pressure. Well, that's a curse. And, and so I, I had to let the Holy Spirit show me show me all of the things that the evil that that the enemy was using against me the enemy, the evil that I had done the evil that my father had done the evil that my brothers had done the evil that my grandfather and and his brothers had done different ones there was a murderer up there there was a murderer in my uh, great uh, great uncle murdered and uh, my dad was in a car accident and a man was killed when I was a little boy. Okay, so there was a, uh, their lives of those people were taken away. And so their dreams were, and their, uh, and their family's dreams were destroyed by my family. And so I had to repent of those things. I had to repent for myself. I had to repent for my, for my uh, uh, father and, and grand, uh, a great uncle. I repented of those things, asked the blood of Jesus to wash them away and get a judgment uh, from, from the righteous judge, which is verses that come forth uh, out of the spiritual realm. It becomes alive to me. I begin to confess those. I de begin to decree them. And then that is executing it until the verdict is executed. It has no power. And you're the one with the power to execute it from Psalm 149. You can execute the judgments. You can execute the verdicts. Does that answer the question? Okay, that answered it perfectly. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. God bless. Okay. God now bless I understand you. perfectly. Okay. 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 Does someone else have, have something they would like to comment or a question that they have? Just uh, unmute yourself. Definitely does uh, make sense, you know, to us now, because if, if um, God really say we could receive the answer of those things, our petition, you know, when we bring them before him, that yes. we didn't understand, we didn't understand before that we had curses that fallen from our father and that these, that these, these curses, we need to really stand um you know before god for them we didn't yeah. know that amen okay. okay. and amen. in order in order for 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 us to be free and receive our answer and also our children to do uh, the um do have that course you know for in their generation that's right amen that's right. amen so, um definitely it is um i really enjoy you know and it's uh, we learning you know, each day, and, Amen. and Amen. thank God for, for his light, you know, his revelation that he's given, um, Brother Fred, each day, each each evening, Saturday evening, that we find it to be so, so little, you know, but it, it but it, it's so, it, it's so meaningful for us, and so then, um, we know that we, with this understanding, we will be able to really, um, you know, get our answer, our prayer answer, if we approach God according to the word, you know, that we come before him and present our case and through the blood of Jesus Christ. Yes. Amen. 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 Amen
Amen. So I really thank you. And, I, and I've been receiving, uh, and also Conchita, <laughs> I, I was interpreting for her. So I really, Hallelujah. really appreciate. And it's, it's, it's something very new for us um, to hear it in this manner. So oh, thank, you, okay. thank, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Sister Eleanor, do you have something? Just unmute yourself. There you go. Yeah, there you go. Oh, no, it's muted. Still muted. Still muted. Can you speak now? No. Oh, there you go. I think he's fixing it. There you go. Hey, speak to us. Is this Sherry? Yes. 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 It was so good to see you all, but yes. I didn't hear anything until after my friends came over here and then someone helped me to um <laughs> to get the sound of it, okay? Yeah. But oh, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. Would we find it on the on the Facebook somewhere about does it go recorded or in Messenger or something? It's uh, recorded on YouTube. Okay, I'll look it up. Okay, uh, it's, uh, Sister Harriet knows the link. I'll, I can send, I'll, I'll try to send no, you a she, link. Yeah, okay. I'll try to send you a link to it. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh -huh. thank okay. You. God bless, God bless. Uh, Harriet? standing still there you go yes we can hear you yeah got it um um and where i can find you guys on youtube yes i'll send you that link again thank you because um people have been asking for it we want i need to watch this again i need to get this teaching again it's really deep okay. really really deep i don't know um the it's interesting you said that we have to ask to open up our bloodline to the holy spirit yes so that he would see um, and how do we know what would the judgment be we, we, we on that want, verdict? We just want to know uh, what's going to stop the accuser from having a basis that's, to accuse us. Yes, and, that's it. And then, and then the Holy Spirit will reveal a verse to you uh, about the judgment the and the verdict. So that would be a scripture verse. Yes yes, yes. 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 All right. May just be the words that God tells you. If it's you know, it may be from the heart of God, or it may be a verse. An, an example, an example for me. Okay. Where my eyes are concerned. Okay. Mm -hmm. I've been using eye drops for the past five years or more. Uh, okay. And the other day, <coughs> like in hair back, I would say around May, June, as I, one day as I was putting eye drop in my eyes, I felt and I knew it was the Holy Spirit saying to me, take the, the eye drop and anoint it. Oh, wow. Pray over it and anoint it, 
And as you put the eye drop three, four times for the day, you put the eye drop in your eyes, you confess and you declare, like you said, the verdict. Yes. Speak the verdict. Yes. I am healed. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am healed and yes. I decree and declare. Yes. Need a, in need of you're talking about, Brother Fred? Yes. 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 Is that what you're talking yes, about? Yes, yes, that, definitely. Yes. Definitely. When the Holy Spirit reveals something to you, you begin to speak it out. Hallelujah. That's excellent. That's excellent. I have, um, Pastor David and, and Mike is right here listening. They don't, you don't see them, but they're here too. Okay. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Thank you. Thank you. You know, the Lord is teaching us a lot of things. Uh, he wants us to He wants us to have the victory. He wants us to have our prayers answered. And and there's been so so many prayers going up. Uh, and and some of them are effective and some of them are not. And so I want I want my prayers to be effective. And we're That's entering amazing. into a, a season of, um, of his return. And uh, September the 18th uh, through the, I think it's the 28th uh, of September uh, is a time of repentance. And, and that's for the nation, that's for the country. Uh, and so uh, this is, yeah. Um, this is something that we that we all need to uh, begin now with our own lives and 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 do what the Lord wants us to do. Yes. So praise yes. the Lord. Thank you, Amen. Lord. Uh, 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 Sister Harriet, I, I'd like to uh, refer back to our conversation we had earlier at the beginning of the meeting, and you were talking about praying for your region uh, there at uh, Oak Ridge and around there. Uh, you can use this same procedure, same approach for the region. Okay, so uh, have there been murders in this, in that, in that region? Have there been uh, 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 women abused? Have there been children abused? Uh, uh, repent for those things. Repent for them and uh, uh, get it under the blood, and then see what the Holy Spirit shows you uh, about what verses to. To, uh, to declare, and those will be the verdict. So as you begin to repent of what your region has done, not you personally, but what your region has done, then that gives you authority to declare things over your region. And Jesus said, that's a prayer. Pray, pray this way. He, he said, this is, there are three ways to pray. And one of them is to go through that judicial system. And then you have influence in your region in your prayers amen amen hallelujah uh, i sense in my spirit that there there are some children some of your uh grandchildren perhaps uh they just need um uh the lord's encouragement and and discipline there i just sense in my spirit uh that uh some of these children need uh structure in their lives they need a schedule in their lives and and they need uh to know where the boundaries are and and so i speak over those children uh that need discipline that need structure uh that the lord will bring that into their lives and and that they will they will be encouraged and they will be comforted and they will be peaceful uh, some of these children have nightmares. I see them. I see them in my spirit. One's a little boy. One's a little girl, and they have they have nightmares when they try to sleep at night. And the and the Lord says that this this is uh, from the from the accuser. This is from the enemy. And so right now we plead the blood of Jesus over these children, and also that they will have structure and discipline uh, come into their lives. Uh, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Uh, also, I, I see a woman, a young woman. Um, she's in, I don't know if she's, she is, um, I believe she's in La Saba. 
uh, right now she's considering um, uh, giving uh, having an abortion and I speak over that 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 woman that she will uh, be touched by the Holy Spirit and that she will make that decision to keep that child uh, in the name of Jesus I speak life over that child right now um, in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus praise the name of the Lord you know the Holy Spirit can tell us everything we need to know and I know nothing without the Holy Spirit and so I encourage each one of you uh, to just say Holy Spirit show me these things Show me what I need to do. Show me what I need to pray. And, and he will do that. Just like uh, Sister Harriet said, he said, anoint uh, those eye drops. Hallelujah. I believe that was, that was from the Holy Spirit. And so he can show you uh, those, those things. So praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Are there any more comments before we close out for to this afternoon? We're, we're still going to be with you next Saturday uh, afternoon, uh, even though it's our, our wedding anniversary, uh, 56 years, 56 years. Hallelujah. God is good. God is good. Amen. God is, God is wonderful. Hallelujah. Amen. But we, we love, we love you. We love you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, Andrea, Andrea, do you have something? Oh, I just want to say I came in late. I'm sorry. I caught just the last part, but the very important part. Um, <laughs> is this like coming into the portals of heaven? Yeah. Yes. To pre present our case before the Lord. Yes. For instance, if you have a problem, we, it's like going into a courtroom in the spirit, in prayer, set apart time and the space and make it as if you're entering into a courtroom but it's yes. the court of heaven to the throne room to god present the Amen. case find yeah. the script hold on to it and the holy spirit will work it out am i right yeah. yes yes, right. yes. Did, I right? did i get it right <laughs> okay okay just wanted to make sure that i caught enough to know to hold on to yes that's excellent that's excellent praise the lord uh, I just, uh, we love each one of you and, and we, we pray that, that God's blessings will be multiplied to you uh, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Uh, I do speak to someone's uh, heart right now uh, that your heart pump uh, will uh, function at a normal rate uh, in the name of Jesus, that you will have energy in your body, that you will uh, be able to uh, breathe uh, properly uh, in the name of Jesus. I do see some excess fluid in your body. And so the, the, I speak to that uh, issue that all the excess fluid in your body uh, will be gone in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, Sister Harriet, will you close this out, please? Father, once again, we're grateful. We're so grateful for the way that you're teaching us. Thank you for the way that you're opening our understanding to be able to advance, to go forward in your kingdom in victory. Yeah. Amen. In victory victory victorious yes, yes yes but the only way we can be victorious is if we know what to do if we know what <laughs> what the strategy is yes and we thank, thank you. you that you're teaching us sweet holy spirit through brother fred and sister sherry i pray that you will continue to bless them hallelujah continue to use them yes. as they open themselves to you for you to use them to help us, Lord. Thank you, Amen. Jesus. Amen. Amen. Continue to bless your people. Amen. 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 Bye-bye. We love you. Bye, everyone. Okay, I'll be Amen. waiting on the link, uh, Brother Fred. Oh, waiting on the link.
Uh, okay, I'll send it to you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Love you. Love you. Bye. Thank you, Nancy.